good afternoon sir uh, good afternoon sir dryden is a poet how he come felt the urge for showing us a critic and producing an as on dramatic poetry and uh, how can we connect these two phenomena poet and a critic and uh, why sir uh, the question uh, definitely uh, i fear is a longish one anyway uh, dryden is a neoclassical poet consciously so the age of dryden comes after the elizabethan age the elizabethan age was uh, having its free flow of imagination and romances and all that and it was by way of a reaction that the next generation of poets writing satires drama in verse in the ancient sense poetry because aristotle uses poetry in the sense of literature but mostly in verse because that was a convention so these neoclassical poets were trying to get back to some different source of inspiration as other than that of the elizabethans mm. in doing so they were getting to extreme positions so some of them were becoming uh, uh, you know conservative imitators rather blind imitators of horace aristotle etc and some of them were looking to the french inspiration the neoclassical way of doing all these things so that the scene was far from being uniform as a poet dryden realized that he needed a kind of a sanitized well um, tested kind of a, a, a advice or model before him which justifies Uh, as against the elizabethan's practice justifies his current age and himself his uh, brother in law howard and his friend sedley you know s- some of them are impersonating as lycidias eugenius mm-hmm. they are all actual persons but i- given imag- imaginary names mm-hmm. that's why he felt that neoclassicism is sometimes off into the dark alleys of fundamentalism or needless narrownesses which have cramping effects and the four interlocutors within the text pretty uh, well qu- shows how the first three are neoclassically oriented but having different positions and neander which is right in himself he is trying to find out a median middle point that is also not only um, warmly responding and consciously kind of uh, good taking the good things out of the classical reference but also taking the good things quietly from the elizabethans meaning the freedom so here is a tacit mixture of classicism with romanticism though in the main dryden is a classicist dryden is not a blind classicist he says that literature ultimately does not slave to any blind doctrine he is advising against this doctrinaire approach so essay on dramatic poesy because dryden himself wrote dramas and in verse in that sense poetry loosely he felt that here is a scope as a practitioner of that particular genre called drama and as an educated literate uh, person he needed to kind of recollect and uh, formally kind of prepare a critical position that's why dramatic poesy dramatic poesy meaning the poetical art form of drama so he looks back to through philip sidney through horace back to aristotle so that's how he is connecting the entire uh, critical and uh, his history of criticism and history of dramatic praxis okay thank you sir thank you uh, see sir uh, observing uh, his uh, uh, career contribution to the english literature uh, one question arises and it is that why dryden has selected uh, dramatic poesy as the title of his critical work right part of its answer is contained in my first reference hmm. dramatic poesy as practiced by the neoclassicists like dryden mm-hmm. needs to justify itself against practitioners like romantic practitioners like shakespeare webster or marlowe mm-hmm. marlowe 
partly pays obeisance to the classical stuff, but they are all ultimately romantic. And as against that, the the dramatic art form practiced by the neoclassicists have to put its own, you know, flag. Uh, courageously and show its autonomy and independence. Once again, the routing back through Sydney to Horace to Aristotle is once again to the point. So dramatic poesy looks back, not only looks back to the past, it is also an effort to temper and moderate the co-practitioners of the dramatic art of Dryden's own time. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh.